According to the Love Your Eyes campaign, nearly everyone on the planet will experience an eye health issue in their lifetime. However, more than a billion people worldwide do not have access to services they need to see clearly. Moreover, the eyes are fundamental to a unique technique that has proved elementary in treating anxiety and psychological disorders. Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to this edition of Soda Today. Today, as we observe World Sight Day, we dissect the importance of eye I care. And joining us in studio via Zoom is Dr. Philip Patudi, who's an opta ophthalmologist and has his own practice called Soweto Eye in Lamini Soweto. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to Soto Today. Thank you, Zola. Good evening and good evening to, to your viewers. Now, Doc, let, let's start here. For those who are sitting at home and watching and are not sure what ophthalmologist is, what is it? So ophthalmologist, it's actually O-P-H, so it's, it's, trust me, it's very difficult to spell, or to pronounce, uh, <laughs> uh, let alone for, for uh, even for medical personnel as well, but mm -hmm. uh, it's ophthalmologist. ophthalmologist, so basically that's a medical doctor who they, uh, trains as a doctor for six years, they do the two years internship, community service, and then after that they have another four to six years of specializing to become an eye surgeon or an ophthalmologist. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, that's pretty much in a nutshell what an ophthalmologist uh, is and does. Mm -hmm. Now, this year's theme for World Sight Day is focusing the world's attention to the importance of, the, of eye care. What is eye care and why is it so important? So the World Sight Day is, is a new initiative by the international, uh, the international um, uh, agency for the prevention of blindness apologies um, and uh, it is every second Thursday of the month of October and it really is just it's an awareness of uh, um, getting the the word out that people need to look after their eyesight but not just patients not just people in general mm -hmm. we also trying to target um, governments uh, people in authority that uh, do assist in putting these uh, projects in, in, in place in order to make sure that the necessary eye health care gets to the people that need it the most and to make it equitable and accessible and affordable. And, and so it is really, in a nutshell, it is um, a global initiative where various activities around the world um, are done in commemoration or in, uh, to, to basically observe the day of World Sight Day. And, uh, and from our side, in, in, in our setting, basically, we. Uh, we, we do annual uh, cataract marathons, for instance, where we will have a whole lot of patients who are, have been blind for months or sometimes even years from cataracts, uh, which is the most common uh, cause of preventable blindness. So we, we tend to have multiple sites across the country and across the world, really, um, where we do these cataracts um, that are most of the time free or sponsored. Uh, I don't really necessarily like to call it free, but most of them are, are sponsored cataracts uh, mm -hmm. surgeries that we do. And um, for instance, where I work, uh, I work in, in public as well as in private, but we, we tend to have an entire month where every weekend and during the week, we try and do sort of catch up um, of um, the backlog of patients who, who are blind from, from cataracts. And so not only that, um, so we, we actively on the ground, we do the surgeries to, to try and uh, uh, bring back the, the site to, to patients, but we also want to bring awareness of um, that eye health is just as important as, as your heart or your, uh, your other parts of the body. Uh, eyesight, unfortunately, is still one of the most neglected uh, parts uh, of the anatomy, and, and it's probably the most important uh, uh, I know I'm, I'm a little bit biased, but it is a very important part of the, of the body that needs to be looked after uh, just like any other part. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in a nutshell, that's pretty much what, what the initiative uh, from the IAPB is all about. Mm -hmm. Now, Doc, a research shows that 600 people around the world and the globally actually are functionally blind and because they do not have access to IK exams and, and glasses, what happens to your eyes when you don't have access to, to IK? So to answer that question, 
pretty much uh, one can sort of divide it into segments, uh, especially in terms of age groups. Uh, we know that there are conditions uh, that you are born with, congenital, we call them congenital problems, that can result in you either having uh, poor sight or blindness. Uh, we know children can be born with cataracts. We do have congenital cataracts. Children can be born with glaucoma, which is an eye condition that damages the optic nerve. So there are various uh, eye conditions that you can be born with that can lead to blindness if not uh, looked after uh, appropriately. And then you have sort of the more younger uh, kids, um, uh, adolescence stage up to the adult stage, where once again, one can uh, have eye conditions uh, such as cataracts, but the more common ones that we see in that age group, refractive errors. So in other words, you need spectacles to be able to correct your vision to see clearly, and this we t uh, typically pick up from the age, school going age. So when the child goes to grade one, and all of a sudden they sit in front of the class, they're no longer in the crash where most of the time it's play therapy, or they're outdoors, now they have to actually sit down in front of a, a, a teacher and, and be able to see what the teacher writes in, in front of the class. And all of a sudden they realize that the child can't see it. So we typically see around about the age of about six, seven, seeing children with refractive errors come kind of present to us um, and with, um, that requires assistance with regards to that. There's also things like um, strabismus, uh, squint in that age group, children that are born with, with uh, squints um, that, could, that, will, that can require surgery to correct the alignment of the, the eyes so that they can have better clear vision. And, and then obviously the more important one, or not the more important one, but the most common mm -hmm. is the elderly. So adults uh, up to um, you know, the 80s, 90s, the elderly uh, population level age, where then you start dealing with age-related cataracts. Mm -hmm. uh, you start dealing with glaucoma, you start dealing with diabetes, you start dealing with a whole lot of other ailments that affect the eyes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and typically, because most of the eye conditions do not have symptoms, mm -hmm. it's very difficult uh, to pick them up early. So patients usually come when there's something wrong. If they're mm -hmm. feeling you know, pain, that's a different story. But most of the eye conditions, such as cataract glaucoma, mm -hmm. um, and even diabetes, patients with diabetes don't come for, for their eye checkups, can result in, in loss of vision and blindness. So I hope that answers your question, but it, it covers this, the entire spectrum of the age group. So it's mm -hmm. not to say that eye problems are for adults only or for, uh, for the younger children. Mm -hmm. No, you definitely answered my question, Doc, and the conversation is getting interesting as we go. And now it's time for us to actually go for a quick ad break. But there are many people who cannot see the beauty of the earth. After the ad break, we further discuss the importance of eye care, what role the government is playing to ensure that people with vision impairment are accounted for and more. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You are still watching Soda today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just tuned in, tuned in rather, we are discussing the importance of eye care and as we observe World Sight Day. And we are still joined by Dr. Philip Patudi, who is an ophthalmologist. I hope I said that right, Doc. Um, now, Doc, let's continue with the conversation. Um, um, before the ad break, you spoke about uh, glaucoma, right? And now statistics say that two thirds of global blindness okay, in women and women are much more likely to develop age-related um, AMD. Now, please explain to us why are women more likely to develop eye problems than men? Very good question. I think um, there's many factors that play a role there. Uh, I think, first of all, if one looks at just the population-wise, uh, females tend to be uh, a lot more in terms of numbers uh, mm -hmm. than men. But I think uh, traditionally as well, uh, we know that there's issues and there's problems that need to be corrected with, when it comes to equity. Mm -hmm. uh, and equity meaning not just uh, women being treated uh, less than, but I think in certain cultures, uh, women tend to be on the back foot uh, where, where the, the men are sort of given the, the, the preference uh, in terms of healthcare. But that, mm -hmm could be one of the few reasons um, 
but it's certainly a problem globally. It's not just uh, you know, it's it's not just us in South Africa. But I think it has to do. There's a lot of social, uh, or psychosocial and social economic factors that that could possibly be the reason for for women not getting um, the care that they need timely. Uh, compared to, to, to men, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think you, you, one, one would probably, and the other thing is, the other thing is that uh, you mentioned AMD. Mm -hmm. AMD is a, a specific type of eye condition. It's called, it's, it stands for age-related macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. And we see that typically in, in more sort of the, the European population. Um, and um, it's it's more common there in Africa. We, we typically don't see that often unless there is some kind of a, a, a cross genetic sort of predisposition uh, for for that in, in that particular community. But typically speaking, AMD affects mostly um, those of European descent, mm -hmm. and it affects a, a very um, specific structure now I call the macula. And uh, there's swelling, there's bleeding in that area, and that obliterates, it takes away your central vision, which is pretty much the, the, the important part or one of the most important parts in the eye that helps us to see clearly. And, and, and so in terms of the numbers for that, mm -hmm. um, from an African point of view, we don't typically see so many patients, but we don't see patients who are of African descent mm -hmm. with AMD, unless, if I, as I said, they mm -hmm. have some kind of genetic predisposition to, to get the AMD. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's only one of the eye conditions that uh, that you know will will typically uh, mm -hmm. be found in, in, the, in the elderly or in the, in the more older population. Mm -hmm. Now, Doc, would you say that the government is doing enough for those who are vision impaired or or the blind? Well, look, it's um, let's let's start by saying that eye health services are available in state. Um, a couple of, uh, about two years ago, I spoke to somebody who was not aware that they could go to a government hospital and get a cataract operation. Mm -hmm. They thought that that kind of service was only available uh, in private sector. Mm -hmm. So starting there, that there are various uh, um, well-equipped, well-trained um, specialists that work in state mm -hmm. that look after the majority, the 90 or 80% or 80, 80 mm -hmm. of patients who are without medical aid. And so that service is, is it enough? Mm -hmm. Definitely, it can never be enough. Um, one, you know, in terms of human resource, uh, that, that we would definitely need more sort of posts available for, for doctors to be able to work as well in, in, the, in the government sector to increase the number of patients that can be seen and helped. Mm -hmm. um, so to speak. Uh, the number one sort of uh, stumbling block is exactly on that, on the human resource factor where mm -hmm. there's just not enough people that, uh, enough specialists, enough optometrists that um, can cater for the masses that require the service. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, so that's in a nutshell my answer to that. Mm -hmm. It is a, obviously a far more complex sort of scenario uh, if, if one has to look at the numbers, are we doing enough? with what we have. Um, there's many, many other factors that play a, a role there as well. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking about not having enough, you know, doctors to help people that are vision impaired or people that are blind, let's talk about schools, Doc. Would you say that there are enough schools and teachers that cater for the blind? Well, look, I don't have the numbers at the tip of my uh, fingers um, in terms of the, whether there are enough schools that cater. I know that there are schools that are uh, designed and they're geared for those who are partially sighted or who are blind. And they do a phenomenal job in terms of training those people, kids, adults, uh, in terms of getting them more functional with the level of vision that they have. But once again, in that area, more can definitely still be done. There, mm -hmm. There's just not enough awareness in terms of uh, where people can go should they find themselves having an end-stage eye disease where they can't see at all. Mm -hmm. I deal quite a lot with especially glaucoma patients mm -hmm. who often sadly come much later in the disease spectrum. Mm -hmm. And 
in the, in the words we often give them is, sorry, there's very little we can do. What we can just try and do is to save whatever little bit you have. But there are some patients who come in completely blind. Mm -hmm. uh, I treat young patients, uh, middle-aged. Uh, I've treated a 47-year-old um, healthcare worker who, who also lost her vision as a result of glaucoma, but not just glaucoma, but combined with other uh, health issues. And, mm -hmm. and, and I mentioned the fact that it's healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. and that's us. That's people who you would think, look, I, I should know what's happening. Mm -hmm. But eye health or eye diseases, rather, Mm -hmm. um, they often come in very silently and mm -hmm. they creep up on you without realizing that you're actually busy going blind. And the message really as part of the World Side Day is to say this, especially if you have diseases such as hypertension or diabetes, mm -hmm. um, you, uh, you, your vision is deteriorating. Don't wait until it's too late. Rather just go and have your eyes checked. And uh, should we pick up something, hopefully it's early enough to be treated. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a question that I want to ask you, Doc, but there's a question that we are we're going to have to discuss um, when we come back from the aid break. I want to know what is the first thing? You know, there are people that were born blind, rather not born blind, but because of circumstances or unfortunate events, they find themselves blind. So I want you to tell me what do they have to do, you know, having when they found themselves in that situation and also how do they then deal with the reality. But now it's time for us to take a short breather and after the ad break we will talk all things maintaining a healthy diet and tips to make sure that you stay with us. Welcome back. You are still watching Soda Today and we are still talking about Wild Side Day and the importance of taking care of your eyes. And we are still joined via Zoom by Dr. Philip Patudi, who also has his own practice in Lamini and Soweto. Now, Doc, before the ad break, I did mention that I want you to answer a very important question. You know, there are people that were not born blind, but due to unfortunate events, they end up losing their eyesight. What is the first thing that they need to do to understand their new reality? Well, look, that's, that's a very important question. And unfortunately, in the South African setting, um, we see a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of car accidents. We see a lot of assaults that result in young people uh, losing their vision uh, permanently. And um, uh, unfortunately, most of it or a lot of it is related to uh, broken bottles, for instance. I think when I was a registrar, um, you know, we, we did a series of study to see of all the young people who lost their vision or at least one eye, uh, what the possible cause could be. And it was mostly due to broken bottles and uh, over the weekend. Um, but anyway, um, to answer your question, the first thing, obviously, uh, if it's not as an easy or straightforward issue, such as injury to the eye or a trauma, one needs to get to a diagnosis. Number one, what caused the blindness or what led to the blindness? And the second thing is, can this that happened in the one eye occur in the other eye? So in other words, we mustn't forget about the healthy eye and we need to make sure that we protect the healthy eye. And, and so once the diagnosis has been made and the plan going forward has been made for that particular patient, one thing that is very important to understand is with one good eye, one can still live a fully normal, fairly, uh, in inverted commas, normal life. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is um, you can still get a driver's license because you need one good eye to be able to, to drive a, a code eight, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. a normal car. You won't drive a car, uh, a truck. You won't be able to drive machinery. You won't be able to work in the mines or in the military. But there are still so many other things that you can do. And, and, mm -hmm. And for us as doctors, we, we all often have to sort of leave a little bit of hope to the people or to the patient who is in front of us who've lost sight in the one eye. Now, if you've lost sight in both eyes, that's a mm -hmm. totally different story. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's where the other team members, such as social workers, come in handy. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, where we, we need, if you're an employed person, we, mm -hmm. we have occupational therapists that we can uh, hope, uh, you know, send you to so that they can have a look at your situation, mm -hmm. both at work as well as at home, to see is there anything that they can do to change your environment mm -hmm. that will help you going forward to, to, to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I mean, in, in the settings that we, we, we find ourselves in, where there's um, quite a lot of people who live in informal settlements, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's quite easy. It's, it's the same thing as 
you know, as what we've seen with, with, uh, with the pandemic, we, uh, in, at level five, we all had to be, you know, it, mm-hmm. it's locked down, uh, you, you need to stay in your house. Well, if you're, you're living in a shack with, with six other people, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, it's virtually impossible. Mm-hmm. So, so in, in our health setting as well, we often have to think and, and know and ask and prod, uh, ask a lot of questions about the social circumstances that that person find themselves in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, will they be able to cope when they get home? Mm-hmm. If, if, you know, you might find that it's, it's a child now that will miss out of school. You need mm-hmm. to find, you know, a social worker that will be able to help you to, to send the child to a school for, for, for the blind or for, for the uh, poor mm-hmm. sighted. And, okay, and so there's many other things, and it starts. It starts with a team. It starts mm-hmm. with a team. Now, 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 Doc, there's a question that um, I couldn't wait to get to, and that's because this is something that I I grew up being told. We grew up being told that eating your carrots will improve your eyesight and you'll see better. Now, I want to know which other foods can can we eat, you know, to help us improve our eyesight? Yeah, Yeah. very good question. And, and, you know, uh, quite quite often with a lot of the eye diseases, patients want to know, is there anything else on top of the 10 eye drops that I'm using mm-hmm. that can help me to preserve my sight. Mm-hmm. And, you know, health, health is definitely in foods. Um, food, the food that's good for your heart mm-hmm. is basically for your eyes. And mm-hmm. that's normally where we start. Mm-hmm. Whatever we say is good for your heart is, is probably good for your eyes. Carrots mm-hmm. certainly more specifically. Uh, why? Because of the vitamin A and the beta carotene. There's certain elements in the foods that uh, result in them being more confined to to the eyes. But I mean, if you eat a carrot, it's good for the rest of your body. It's good for mm-hmm. your for for your eyes as well. So foods that are rich in vitamin A, uh, foods that are rich in in uh, antioxidants, um, mm-hmm. that you know that that can help in terms of improving the blood supply to the eye, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, carrots is definitely one of them. Um, sweet potatoes, believe it or not, also contain quite a lot of vitamin A. And there are many other foods, and I think patients or people who are listening mm-hmm. who maybe have eye problems, specific diagnoses, it's mm-hmm. worthwhile just chatting to your ophthalmologist or your, your doctor or even seeing an, uh, a dietitian mm-hmm. who can have a proper, well-structured diet specifically for the condition that you have. And, and um, so, so definitely carrots, keep eating your carrots. Uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's, uh, that's not going to change anytime soon. But, mm-hmm. but in essence, any foods that are rich in antioxidants, mm-hmm. um, okay. and that includes a lot of fruits and vegetables, kale, um, you know, oranges, we know, um, mm-hmm. foods that we know are healthy for our, generally for our bodies are generally healthy for your eyes as well. Mm-hmm. Now, in, in closing, Doc, do you have any tips on how to possibly prevent blindness? Please have your eyes checked. That's the first thing. And um, we, have a, we have a lot of optometry services. We have ophthalmologists um, in both in government as well as in private. Uh, even your general practitioner, some of them who are well geared uh, with equipment that can be perhaps start um, you know, the, 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 the referral basis. So mm-hmm. if, you, if you're a general practitioner, uh, or you, if you're a senior general practitioner and you know you have diabetes, ask them about, should I not go and check my eyes uh, for, for diabetes? You know, even if there's nothing wrong with your eyes. As I said earlier, unfortunately, a lot of the eye conditions are symptomless, and, mm-hmm. um, which means that you don't feel anything, you don't feel pain. Maybe every now and then you might get a little bit of discomfort. Mm-hmm. But um, unfortunately, most of them don't have symptoms. They don't have warning signs. Mm-hmm. They don't have warning signs uh, to tell you, listen, maybe go and have your eyes checked. And there's quite a lot of diagnosis. There's a lot of eye conditions that we pick up by accident. Mm-hmm. So somebody comes in, they're coming in because they have a, a burst blood vessel and the eye is mm-hmm. red. It's painless. The vision is still fine. And then when you check the blood pressure, you find that they have extremely high blood pressure. And mm-hmm. that caused that small blood vessel in the eye to burst. And vice versa, somebody who... Um, has has diabetes um, and all of a sudden they just they fail the driver's license test mm-hmm. and when you check the eyes you find that they 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 have diabetes in their eye and they're busy bleeding inside the eye mm-hmm. so my main message really is um, don't forget about your eyesight when you 
doing a, a general checkup for your health. Mm -hmm. um, start wherever is nearest to you. Mm -hmm. If you know there's an optometrist and you haven't seen an optometrist or an ophthalmologist, um, go make an appointment, have them check you out, and, uh, and then we can at least tell you how often you need to see us or you need to see an eye specialist. Mm -hmm. And if there's a diagnosis, we can pick it up early and do something about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Doc. That was very informative. And we do hope that people have taken some, you know, health lessons and also um, understand the importance of, of eye care. Because, I mean, we often hear about the importance of going to see the dentist, you know, going to see other doctors, but we don't really hear much about the eye. And I do hope that people have learned a lot about that. Thank you for joining us, Dr. And thank you so much for your time. Now that was Dr. Philip Patudi, who is an eye specialist, talking to us about the importance of eye care since on, to on today's show, we were observing World Sight Day. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to engage with us about the show by simply, simply sending us an email on Today at sowetotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 011-933-3000 from myself and the rest of the team. Team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this. So goodbye for now.